In 1 Corinthians 16, Paul writes that if anyone has no love for the Lord, let him be accursed. Our Lord, come. Our Lord come, or O Lord come, is pronounced from the original text as Maranatha. But this isn't the usual Greek phrase used in Revelation 22, 20, come Lord Jesus. Maranatha is an Aramaic term or expression, the meaning of which appears twofold. Maranatha we typically spell as one word, but in the manuscripts it's actually written down as two Greek words tied together. If Paul wrote them as Maran Arthur, then it means the Lord has come, past tense, referring to his first coming. If he wrote it down as Marana Fa, then it could be translated Lord, please come, future, relating to his second coming. To say that he has come is is a creedal expression. Messiah has come. He dwelled among us 2,000 years ago. To say, Lord, come, again, is a faith statement. You believe that he is coming again, as well as expressing your desire for that day of salvation. So it can mean both. The Lord has come and, O oh Lord, come. And this wouldn't have been lost on Paul. It appears purposefully and intentionally dualistic in its meaning. Led by the Spirit, Paul knows that the reader will make the double-pointing connections. Maranatha is the gospel in a word. It's a word of faith. It speaks of both comings of Messiah, the man on the donkey and on the white horse, the suffering servant and the warrior king. It's the heart's desire of all those whose spirits groan for the restoration of all things, for this age to pass away and for the day of the Lord to come. And it's a word that has seen tremendous upsurge in its use of late. Now, we should emphasize what the Bible emphasizes and we should speak little of what the Bible speaks little of. So we need to be careful that we don't place too much emphasis on one word or two in the Greek, used only once. However, this international upsurge is not the result of a movement that spread, but of many people around the world who independently, who spirit-led, began to speak this word Maranatha. And it's become a greeting and a sign-off between fellow brothers and sisters. It's become a great shining light on mental health within the church. We recognize godly sorrow, the Father's heart for justice and renewal. It's beginning to broach the, the wider framework of the gospel, unblinding the stagnant narrative that remains in the first century. And since the garden, Torah, the prophets, the apostles are all pointing to the day of the Lord, Maranatha is a word that encapsulates the whole thrust of the Bible. Now, why would we not say a word that proclaims that Jesus has come, that he offered himself as king. He, re he was rejected by his own people. He died on a cross for sin to offer forgiveness, to acquire the right to inherit, who will come back to save his own people, establish his kingdom, judge the living and the dead, and his rule and reign will extend globally for eternity. This is not a word to be appropriated to be branded for selfish gain or stylistic fanfare, but it is a word that brings unity. It is something that we can gather around. It is a word to get excited about. Now, we're going to do some events, and I've thought about this for a long time, but I didn't want to build hard and fast and leave God behind. So. Um, we don't know when, where, how we're waiting on God. Yet, if you're interested in events or conferences, however it may look, gathered around the message of Maranatha, go to the Maranatha page on the website, myking.com slash Maranatha, and register your interest. Um, and that way, we, we know how many people, what's possible, and you'll be the first to know. Maranatha.